open and it's got good powdery mildew and uh, uh, just nice, nice form, uh, red fall color, and it defoliates. Unlike a lot of these oaks, it doesn't hold its brown foliage in the winter time. Uh, it drops its leaves and gives you the clean appearance. So street spire is probably my favorite. And it's, it's nice that way, but I think this could be limbed up uh, and it gets maybe a little bit wider and it'll, it'll be a, a narrow oval form that would make a wonderful street tree. Ground there. Wet soil collar, and it's really gained traction. And Case American Dream, I saw way back when, but John Malone, who, where's John at? John in here somewhere? John, where are you? Oh, there he is. John put it in his uh, little nursery, <laughs> little nursery, but uh, called Summer Shade over in Good, Good Hope. Good name for a, for a nursery. Good Hope, Georgia. And I go visit John. We've been buddies forever. And I saw the thing in the field in our miserable, hot, stinking summer day. And I took a picture. That leaf is the most leathery, dark green. I think everybody that's seen it, it's going on the belt line in Atlanta, it's going, they're going about everywhere. I bought one from John, he charged me full price, by the way. <laughs> but you know what? It was worth every penny. And just quick on oaks. Oaks are white oak group, red oak group. But how many know Doug Talami or have ever heard of Doug Talami? What's Doug say about you? Know how many species of caterpillars complete their life cycle on oaks? It's like 500, it was 34. You go online and look up Tommy and you list all the species. You look how many caterpillars feed on pears. Yeah. Shit, they feed on them and they die. No, <laughs> they feed on oaks and they complete their life cycle. But I love, I, I was just looking at the, the oak over here, the heritage oak. And if you look at the acorn, I teach you a little bit tonight. The acorn, see the peduncle on the stalk of the acorn? It's about two inches long, which tells you you got English oak in there because English oak has a big, long peduncle. And there are a lot of high, there's probably more hybrid oaks in cultivation now than there are straight species, huh? I suspect. I'll let Keith talk about it. I want to talk a little bit about what you think. They're grafted probably on a lot of these uh, white oak groups on bicolor, but long term, are they going to be okay? Is there going to be any kind of rejection? Do um, you think they're, they're for the ages as, as grafts or what? As far as, as far as incompatibility, yeah, yeah, I think so. There's a, there's a lot of incompatibility in the red oak side of the family. The red oak side of the family, the oaks divide into red oaks and white oaks as uh, kind of two sections in the genus. The the red oaks are the ones with the pointed lobes, um, pin oak, scarlet oak, and so on. And and those there are no cultivars uh, that are successful really because of high rates of graft incompatibility. Uh, Frank Santamore did a lot of work on this and uh, basically established that the white oaks tend to are, are compatible, the red oaks are not. It's not quite that simple. Um, there is some incompatibility you occasionally see, but we weed that out uh, early, we think. So, yeah, I think they're, uh, they're solid and, and good improvements. What's the universal rootstock for the white oak? Is it bicolor? Uh, it depends on the tree. If there's rober in the cross, we usually use rober. Uh, if, if it's a, a bicolor, we'll use bicolor. Um, bur oak, we put on burr.